uh, today's video is going to be an update video. Um, so uh, about nine, ten months ago, I think, um, I did a Windows 11 virtual machine setup video in our virtualization station. Um, that was using a development edition of Windows 11 because it hadn't been released yet. Um, so in today's one, I'm going to show you um, some changes we've made since then. Um, so things like using UEFI BIOS. Uh, there's now an option for Windows 11 within Virtualization Station. Previously, I, I recommended you use Windows 10 because we didn't have the Windows 11 option added yet. Uh, but also, since it went to a final release, the, a lot of the hardware requirements changed. Um, so you aren't able to install a full release of Windows 11 um, uh, the same way I did it in the, in the last video. That only worked for the development edition. Uh, so this one's going to be the, the full process of, of how to get it working. Uh, so the first step is to get your Windows 11 ISO. So you can literally just Google uh, download Windows 11. It brings you to a few links. So you can click this top one. Um, here there's quite a lot of options. So you might not know which to do, but it's the ISO we want. So you can say download Windows 11 uh, disk image ISO and you can pick the, the multi-edition ISO and hit the download option. So um, I'm not going to bore you waiting for a 5 gig file to download, but that's how you would get the, the Windows 11 ISO. It's completely free to get it. Uh, you do need a license key if you want to uh, not have the OS expire, but you can install it without a license key. Um, so now, once we've got the ISO, uh, we just have to put it on the NAS. Um, so here in the public share, I put it in the uh, Windows 11 um, ISO folder. Um, you can create separate shares for your virtual machines if you wish. Um, this public folder is on a, uh, an NVMe SSD volume, so it's nice and fast for, for this purpose. I would definitely recommend NVMe. Um, SSD for your virtual machines. It just makes it go so much faster. Uh, so here this Windows 11 um, English X64 V1 ISO. Um, it did say it was a multi-edition so you can pick which edition like Home, Pro, Workstation. There's a lot of different options which you'll see as we get through. Uh, so the steps here to, to get it up and running is open up Virtualization Station. Um, if it's your first time opening Virtualization Station, it's probably going to prompt you about creating virtual switches and things. You can just choose the default options and that should be enough for most. Um, so here I'm going to click Create. It wants a, uh, a VM name, so I'll just say Win11, for example. It's automatically picked the version before Windows 11 wasn't an option here. Um, and it's automatically going to select the UEFI BIOS, um, which is what you need for Windows 11. So here I'm going to change some different options. I'm going to add um, lots of cores. I'm going to leave it on the 4 gig of RAM. That's fine. Um, so it wants the CD image location. So that's the ISO file. So if I just browse to that public share, there it is. So I'm just going to click OK on that. And where do I want to put the VM when it's installed? Again, just going to put it in the public share because I haven't created any others at this time. Um, so that's pretty much everything set up as part of the wizard. Um, now, I'm not going to turn it on uh, by default. I'm going to change some things to optimize it. It does make the setup a little bit more complicated, uh, but and you'll see that as I go through it, I'll do the full steps. But this is going to make the VM perform so much faster. Um, and a lot of these steps are going to be the same for any version of Windows specifically as well. So I'm just going to click OK so that it creates, creates the VM. Now last time I'd have just powered it on and had a look at it, uh, but this time I'm going to hit the settings option instead. So now I'm going to change quite a few options. So once you're in the settings, click the settings tab at the top. And I'm going to go through and change a few things. So for mine, I'm not going to be transferring this virtual machine around. So rather than using a, an emulated CPU, I'm going to do a pass through of the actual CPU. So I'm going to just apply that. Every time you change a setting, you do have to apply it. Applied successfully. Uh, storage, I'm going to change it from the default of IDE to VIRT-IO. V-I-R-T-I-O. So I'm going to click apply on that one. I'm also going to add um, add device at the top here. I'm going to add another CD drive. Now this will make sense a bit later on as I go through the options um, so that I've got two CD drives because I'm going to need to add some drivers for this VertIO interface. Otherwise Windows during the install wizard will not see any storage to add to because Windows doesn't have the VertIO drivers built into it. Um, so pretty much for most of the other options right now, um, I don't really need to change anything else. Um, you can customize these at any time you want later. Um, so everything else, I'm quite happy with the uh, the settings and options uh, with everything else. So now it's done, I'll go back to the overview. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to click start on that. Uh, sorry, before I do that, I need to add the uh, extra CD drives uh, uh, item. So here we've got CD DVD 1 has got the ISO that I already added for the install. CD DVD 2 
it wants to add something else so I'm going to hit insert guest tool CD so that's now got the Windows guest tools this is the the QNAP VM tools if you like so now I've got two CDs installed um, effectively inside my virtual machine so I can see those here um, so I'm going to now power up that virtual machine and go have a look in um, so the first thing it's going to do is go to a UEFI shell rather than go straight to, to booting up the, the, the virtual machine. Um, so what I found to, to type in here that works best is um, a small sort of command. So if you do um, FS0 and then do colon backslash um, EFI backslash boot backslash boot x64.efi. So if you type that, it'll come up at the top and it'll say uh, what you'd normally see, which is uh, press any key to boot from CD or DVD. So I'm going to hit enter. And as soon as I see that message, I'll hit enter again. There we go. So now it's going to launch into the, the setup wizard um, of Windows 11 so that you can access it. So there are a couple of those EFI commands you can use. Uh, I'll see if we can put those in the comments section or in the title section below the video. Um, for which ones to try. Uh, for the latest ISO that's on Microsoft's website though, uh, that FS0 command I just typed does work for that one. Um, with past editions I have had to use a different command, so I'll put both there so you can try whichever one uh, whichever one you want to, to work there. So now we're, we're just doing a standard Windows setup, so we'll take you through the whole thing. Um, we'll set this up without a license key, so I'll show you the options to, to click for that just to get it up and running. Um, and the final step is to just optimize it so that it fully works so with the, the QNAP guest tools. Uh, so here I'm going to say I don't have a product key. I'm going to pick which version, so I'll say Windows 11 Pro. Um, accept the license terms. I'm going to do the custom install, which you need to do, otherwise it won't find any drives. So here is where you would normally see, if you'd left it on IDE, uh, you will see um, uh, the 250 gig hard drive you assigned or whatever size you used. You would see it straight away there. But on this one, I'm going to have to click load driver because it can't find any drives. So if I do that and I browse, if I look in one of the CD drives, this is the CD drive with the Windows guest tools that I added. And I'm going to go into Windows 10 and AMD 64, 64 bit version and click OK. And it's going to go look in that folder of that virtual CD drive and it's going to find a few things. The one we want is the Red Hat Vert IO SCSI controller and I'm going to click next. And this is going to add the drivers for the, uh, the Vert IO controller I chose to use. The reason I'm using the Vert IO controller is it massively improves the disk access performance of the virtual machine. Uh, so now we see that we've got the 250 gig uh, capacity drive that we added. That's worked. All you need to do now is click next. Uh, so now it's going to go off, get the files ready for installation, copy everything, get it, get it up and running. Uh, once uh, Windows has been fully installed, um, I'll go through the little setup wizard that Windows provides. And one of the last steps I'll do is to um, install the Windows guest tools um, onto the, uh, the virtual machine. Um, and then after that's done, um, I will go and eject those, uh, the install CD for Windows and the Windows guest tools because we don't need those anymore. Um, if you want to at that stage, you can remove that extra CD, DVD drive as well. Um, but it will be up and running, ready to go, um, ready for use. Uh, so we'll come back to you as soon as this, uh, this step is finished here. Okay, so that's uh, basically Windows installed. Now we just have to customize it for our usage. Uh, so if I just set the uh, keyboard here to the UK, I don't need to add a second keyboard layout. And I'm pretty much gonna choose uh, no for all the other options, just because this is just a, a test platform. You might want to pick different options depending on your preferences. Uh, signing in with a Microsoft account, for example. <laughs> Okay, so now it wants to uh, name your device, so I'll just say this is the uh, uh, Craig Win 11, something like that, that'll do. Oh, Windows doing a, another reboot. It does reboot quite a lot throughout this um, setup wizard process. 
Okay, so I'm going to set this one up as a uh, personal use. So I'll click next. I'm going to choose sign in options then because I don't want to sign in with a Microsoft account. So sign in options, I'm going to choose offline account. Um, I'm going to skip for now because I really don't want the Microsoft account on there. Uh, into the name of the account that's going to log in. So I'll just say Craig. It needs a password typing in. I'll type in a password. typed in security question one so I'll do test security question two testing and security question three tested <coughs> um, I don't want the apps to use the location I don't want to find my device um, required information only don't need the inking and typing. Don't need that. Don't need that. Um, so that's pretty much Windows completely set up. It's just going to do a couple of updates. Um, but once this is finished, it'll log into the Windows interface, and you now have a fully working copy um, of Windows 11. Um, the last step uh, for me is while we've got the Windows Guest Tools uh, CD uh, inserted into the drive is I will install those. Um, it helps uh, link between um, the virtual machine uh, and the hypervisor on the keynap. So if you say needed to find out uh, the IP address of the virtual machine, um, you'll be able to get that directly from uh, the virtualization station software uh, because we've got the guest tools installed. And it also just throws in a couple of extra drivers that might be needed. Um, so we'll just wait for that to come up and then we'll get the uh, guest tools installed and it's pretty much ready to go, ready for use. Okay, so that's Windows fully installed and ready to go. Um, so one thing that I will do is I'll just go to the uh, file section here. I'll go down to the uh, CD DVD drive, which has got the, uh, the QNAP uh, guest tools installed. So I'll click on QNAP guest tools. Um, it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to run it? I'm going to say yes. Um, and then it will uh, allow me to install this software that will um, optimize the VM for, for usage. So here, QNAP guest tool set up next. I agree. I normally tick these two extra boxes. Click install. Install. <clears throat> so it just finishes the, the setup of these finish and now the virtual machine is all ready to go so what I can do now if I want to is I can come over here and I can eject uh, the Windows installation CD click OK and I can also eject the uh, the guest tools if I want to as well and I can go into the settings and remove that second DVD CD drive if I want to uh, but over here in the uh, the virtual machine uh, we do have uh, the the two CD drives that were there uh, but they're now empty. There's no discs in those. But I've got a fully working, fully set up uh, uh, machine here to use. You can go and change things like screen resolution, whatever you want. Turn on remote desktop protocol or set up the, the VNC options here if you want to. Um, so very easy to use, very easy to set up. Um, yeah, very, very easy and simple to use. Um, so that's how you would set up uh, Windows 11 um, on a QNAP using the latest uh, ISO from Microsoft. Um, so obviously, if you want to use it as a permanent solution, you'll need a license key. Uh, but that's how you would install it if you didn't have a license key. Uh, I believe it expires after a period if you don't uh, have a license key or the functionality will reduce. Uh, but that's it, up and running, ready to go. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, please leave it in the comments section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.